Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever it is that you are and wherever you may be. Thank you very much for making us a part of your day. I am Brad Franklin, the creative content writer here in Chesterfield. And I'm very glad to tell you that Chesterfield on the Mic is on the air once again. We are working our way through the five magisterial districts like I'd like to do at least once a year. We're wrapping up today, wrapping up our tour, so to speak, uh, in Midlothian with Dr. Mark Miller. First off, Dr. Miller, welcome to the podcast. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Good morning, Brad. Glad to be here. I very much appreciate the time. Usually, the first time I have a guest on the show, what I like to do is kind of have a little bit of a, um, or I guess any time I have a guest on the show, I like to have a little bit of an introduction and talk through things. And then in, in looking at your background and sort of the, the, the sort of vantage point that you bring to things, um, given your experience um, you know, with mental health support services, I, I kind of wanted to start there and kind of have that sort of be our introdu- an introduction, sort of um, the the way we kind of get into things. We'll, we'll get into a lot of the, the different stuff going on in Midlothian specifically in a minute, but I'm just curious, um, what was it about um, the field that really kind of called your name initially? What was it about mental health and mental health support that really sort of um, brought you to that line of work early on? Well, thank you for the opportunity to hang out. I know you're saving the best for last with it being Midlothian. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, thanks this morning. Um, I, my, my doctorate is in clinical psychology, um, but I didn't start out that way. Right. My undergrad was in English education, so I was a high school English teacher. Right. And as a high school English teacher, I was hanging out with students and was recognizing that there was a lot going on with them, not just educationally, but also what was going on with their mental health and right. with home and, and all that going on. Right. So uh, I, uh, while working through, um, well, as a teacher and seeing that it was, the, I kind of came through the idea of, Hey, you know, it's time mm-hmm. to maybe move on and see what I could do and work with the student, not just on the educational level, but on all levels. Right. So I um, went ahead and started a master's degree. And what I became really interested in um, was not just mental health with students that were, you know, adolescents, but also those students that were having difficulty in school. Right. So we were thinking about folks with disabilities and those kind of things. Right. So when I did my master's degree, I did that at Chippensburg University. I was really interested in working with an organization called Devereaux. Okay. And Devereaux was located in Paoli, Pennsylvania, and worked with folks with disabilities mm-hmm. and accommodations and those kind of things. So um, when I moved on for my doctorate, uh, that was one of my focuses was working with individuals with disability. But of course, going through a doctor working with all different kinds of individuals in all different kinds of situations. I ended up working with uh, folks with substance abuse. So when I got licensed as a professional counselor, I was also certified as a substance abuse counselor. Right. So I worked with folks uh, in Berkeley and uh, long-term drug addicts and adults and then seriously mentally ill. And uh, so we've really rounded out my experience in, okay, how can I help with individuals in the human condition? Right. So right. when I moved here in 96, 97 uh, from the California area to from the Bay Area here, um, I started out working at Tucker's, mm. uh, at Tucker Psychiatric and uh, working with folks with substance abuse before going to Chesterfield County. Mm-hmm. Worked for Chesterfield County for 13 years in mental health support services, and I was there working with folks with disabilities. Right. Uh, so um, I was supervising uh, directly or indirectly uh, service coordinators and coordinating mm-hmm. services with folks with intellectual and developmental disabilities. An uh, incredible uh, opportunity to see what I could do, support the case managers, the service coordinators in helping these individuals really to fullest blossoming and greatest right. good. Yeah. So, yeah. And given your, you know, extent extensive, you know, uh, experience in the, in the field and also in terms of your experience here in, in Chesterfield, um, what have you seen sort of change from mental health support services over the years? Generally speaking, like for those who may not be in, as familiar with like the impact that uh, mental health support services has and the needs of like our community here, what, what do you want them to sort of know and understand about mental health? And I realize that that question could be its own podcast series, right? I mean, that's a very meaty, uh, question, but I'm just curious to kind of get your thoughts on, on some of that. Right. I think that I appreciate the question, and you're right. It could easily <laughs> be we could have the whole time together just discussing that. Right. I will say this, is that there are a lot of services that are available through Chesterfield County that folks may not be aware of. Right. So when um, uh, you're having issues related to whatever it may be, right. um, if it's substance abuse or if even if you need to see a psychiatrist or all those kind of things, reach out to Chesterfield Mental Health. Um, they're incredible there, and uh, there's no wait list. 
list as far as being able to see someone there and to get the ball rolling right. for services. I mean, I come from uh, the belief that you do want to keep it a secret as hard as it may be to do that. The miracle is in the talking. Right. The miracle is in the communicating and being able to say, okay, hey, this is what's really authentically going on with me. Right. And, um, and I need help. Mm-hmm. So uh, that is what Chesterfield Mental Health Support Services is there for. And I'm just a huge advocate. I was, you know, again, I was there for 13 years right. um, before moving on to Bright Point as a professional counselor at Bright mm-hmm. Point Community College. So, um, just to you know, just a strong part of uh, Chesterfield that folks need to take, uh, be aware of, and take advantage of. Right. Now, you mentioned Bright Point. Obviously, one of the pieces of um, some of the things that happened in 2022. I want to kind of get some of your um, your thoughts and opinions on. The, there were a lot of economic development announcements in 2022, especially with Lego coming up. That was you know, the crown jewel, so to speak. And there are a lot of places that would love to have a crown jewel that looked anything like Lego looks. And I know that for bright point and so many of the different folks around the community, these announcements from 2022 seem to, you know, just be very monumental in terms of like the outlook for, for Chesterfield. And I'm just curious in your opinion, how do you feel that those announcements be it Lego or the many others that there were last year? How do you feel like those announcements from economic development impact both the county and your district specifically. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about Bright Point. I mean, having Bright Point in Chesterfield County and also serving uh, all the neighboring communities, that truly is the gem in many ways yeah. of so um, the gem of the county. Um, so when uh, folks are graduating from high school and they're not really sure what they want to do, this is an incredible opportunity to attend a community college right. and to explore what works, what doesn't work. And not only that, I mean, Bright Point is a wonderful feeder into these kind of organizations like Weidmuller Mueller that just had their um, breaking groundbreaking yesterday and with Lego and ISO. These are yeah. high technology right. uh, organizations that Bright Point is going to be feeding Mm -hmm. um, really well-trained, interested, curious students uh, and and just is the lifeblood of the community in so many ways. Yeah. Um, so very, very excited, you know, to have someone like uh, you know, an organization like Lego, a company here. Yeah. And you're right, in many ways, um, you know, I have some friends who may say we may not know where Chesterfield is, but if we were to say, hey, you know, this is where Lego makes their blocks, yep. then that becomes yeah. uh, very much, you know, it's like, oh, okay, and everybody can relate. Yeah. But I mean, small business here in Chesterfield is the lifeblood of um, the, the county. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm part of BNI, um, which is an organization that really focuses on uh, small business. Right. And so that it's so important to, it's easy to kind of see the, um, the shiny, yeah. uh, you know, object in the room, but, but right. recognizing, oh my gosh, that's just one small part of a much stronger uh, business community. Right. And in terms of the county as a whole, you have to have not just the crown jewel, right. Or the, the very, the shiny objects, you got to have all of it. And especially, as you said, that backbone, uh, in small business to make everything work. One of the things that obviously, uh, you know, having just been through sort of the time frame of the year we're in, we're on the other side of budget season. Obviously, um, that's a integral, um, p- component of the bigger picture for the County, certainly for, you know, the County's relationship with schools. And I just want to kind of get your opinion too on, sort of that process um, and why it was so important um, in your opinion for the county to to work with schools to kind of close that funding gap and sort of what came out of that entire budget season. Right. I also wanted to mention, it's just a small business, if I can go back for a second, yeah, sure. for the Midlothian Business yeah. Alliance. Yeah. Also very, very important for creating that backbone. Yeah. So all part of that. I mean, with the schools, uh, you know, it is so important that we work in tandem. You know, as a former high school English teacher, exactly, yeah. I want to be able to support the schools in every way I'm able to. Um, what I have loved is how um, the five um, supervisors have worked together to figure out, okay, how can we best fund the schools, be able right. to do that? Um, I mean, one of the things I love about the five of us, we're like a really good basketball team. <laughs> we know when we need to pass. We know when we need to dribble. We right. know what areas to work on. And not only that, I think it's so important that we each come to the table with our own separate expertise. Right. So myself with health, mental health and um, being a former teacher, 
year, uh, that's really helpful when pulling together the budget. Yeah. And of course, we have someone who is an accountant. We have an attorney. Uh, we have um, uh, someone who's a former police officer, uh, and, and we have someone who's a developer. Right. So with all of that, we can work together uh, to figure out okay, what is the best way uh, to serve the community and also uh, our schools. Right. So it it's been. I mean, like with anything else, when we're dealing with budget, we're dealing with money, and we're dealing with priorities. Right. And that's what makes it uh, such a challenge right. to be figure out, okay, how are we going to go about this so mm-hmm. that we can hit those touch points? Yep. Now, in terms of the, um, you know, kind of moving from like the, the sort of county specific topics to like the district specific topics, I know Spring Line of District 60, you know, having just done the, um, the groundbreaking and, and the event in March, um, this is obviously very important development and, and, and not just development in the word of project, but in terms of development as in thing that is happening, right? Both senses of that word are perfectly accurate here, not only for, for Chesterfield, but for Menlothian specifically. At the event in March, you said rep- revitalization is such an important part of smart growth. I'm curious to get sort of your viewpoint on how you see this project meeting that objective, but also sort of meeting the needs of the community. I mean, as a long term, it's a great question. On the long term, as a long term resident, um, I have seen the best products building sit there vacant yeah. for literally decades. Yeah. And so something needed to be done to revitalize, infill that part of the corridor. Right. And the Economic Development Authority under Garrett Hart's leadership uh, and being able to kind of infuse into there some energy, some new energy. Right some exciting energy to yeah. that area uh, was it's just so incredibly important mm-hmm. so now with it being completely cleared and it's a blank slate at tabula rasa we're able to then move forward with uh, okay what are we going to do with right. it and and that plan was already in place even before we got started right. so it's going to be multi-use in so many ways um multi-family and just revitalize just what we did across the street yep. um with um uh, what we used to be the cloverleaf mall right and and now uh, kind of a good balance mm-hmm. and it's in great situation it's a great position from right there on Chippenham Parkway right. and it truly is a gateway to Chesterfield and certainly my district yeah. um, for Midlothian yeah now in terms of um, sort of development in general pace of development is, is certainly a topic of conversation a lot and certainly some one of those things you mentioned sort of the balance of, of things and sort of the um, the sort of way the process works in a lot of uh, a lot of parts of the organization. And I'm just curious, in your opinion, how do you see pace of development specifically in, in your district and, and, and maybe even Chesterfield at large? And how does that sort of play into um, as you're sort of, you know, hearing from residents and sort of putting together sort of your own um, your your own objectives and your own sort of ideas about where things need to go. How does pace of development play a role in that? It's a great question. Um, the the pace is important. I'm a long distance runner. Okay. So I mean, I've ran ten marathons. So you understand a thing so or two about pace. I understand a concept <laughs> about pace, and it's really important that you know I don't in, on a marathon. I don't want to be sitting at mile eighteen and be out of, be out of gas. Right. And so what I'm paying attention to is I want to make sure that we're not getting ahead of our skis. Right. And I think that on some level we really have um, and as a result I think that the community itself has started to ask questions around okay is this going to how is it going to impact our schools our roads our first responders mm-hmm. so I am not against development exactly the opposite but I am curious or make sure that I'm paying attention to what is the pace that works best for the community and I want to mention also how important it is good communication with my constituents. Yeah. So I don't want folks going to sleep one night expecting that whole big group of forests of trees to be there when they wake up the next morning. Right. Um, they, if, if something is going to change, they should be aware of what's going to be happening. Right. And so my job I see primarily are two areas. Um, one is making sure communicating really well with our um, with 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 the community, and the other is safety. I right. mean, they're, they're the two areas I feel the most um, energy about and making sure I'm doing my job in my communicating am I doing everything to keep everybody safe a minute ago you mentioned um, schools and I kind of want to get a kind of an update from you on Midlothian middle school I know there's um, you know there's a lot that is happening both tied to the bond referendum and sort of what was before the bond referendum and everything can you give me an update on sort of where things are with that project 
Um, right now with Midlothian Middle, we're moving forward and trying to identify where is the school best situated for the community. Right. There are four options that are out there right now. One is for it to remain exactly where it is, except on a different place on the property. Right. So that's one option. And then there are three others. One possibility as we move forward with connecting Woolridge to Woolridge, um, uh, right past Bro- uh, Bright Point, yeah. uh, there's a possibility of the school going there. It could possibly go further west on Midlothian. Um, what I'm looking for is I just don't want to shoehorn the school into a really small area. I want right. to make sure that it has room to breathe, that the students have room to breathe, right. and that it, they feel comfortable there. And of course, environment's huge when it comes to education, yeah. um, that they're excited where it is and excited about the schooling. So um, we're, we're still looking at what would work best, especially because I think we're in the one in a hundred year opportunity to yeah. decide, okay, what are we going to do with the village? Yeah. And if we are going to move the school there um, away from that area, then what is going to go in its place? Right. I, You were talking about development. I, I'm not convinced that we want to put in any kind of high density uh, development there. I'm right. leaning toward some sort of a Midlothian green okay. uh, there that could be a place possibly where we could have our July 4th fireworks. I'd love to see a Midlothian arts in the park Okay. Um, or maybe ice skating rink yeah. uh, during the winter. Those are the kind of things. Maybe Richmond Symphony can come out and do something. So um, we want to be creative, and I want to you know, be part of breathing additional life into the village yeah. and what that might look like going forward. Yeah. Now, you also mentioned safety a few minutes ago. Obviously, you know, there's there are always, in, in when we, we start talking about sort of um, district-specific um, sort of projects and things. A lot of that is road improvements, right? People are always interested, you know, what's going on with this? What about that? What about this? Can you give me some, some areas of focus? Um, where, where are some places around your district that you feel like, um, where there are either projects that are in, in development, you know, things that are coming or close, or maybe some places where you think some attention, some, you know, whether it's lighting, whether it's uh, speed study, whether it's, you know, traffic patterns. I'm just curious to get some of, um, some of your thoughts on various sort of road improvements or road projects, um, different ideas or, right. uh, around that going in, uh, in your district. Yeah, thank you for the question. I mean, there is, I mean, the first thing is folks slow down. Um, I mean, I get phone calls almost uh, daily, emails about folks that are just driving too fast. Um, I'm of the mind, never let desire impede judgment, meaning that I know we all need to get somewhere we're usually late, Mm -hmm. but the difference of a couple of minutes can make the difference in someone's lives. Um, I mean, we are working on a a variety of projects. Um, Certainly the light at Ashwell coming out of Tarrington, is something that needs to be moved forward on. There is surveying. Folks making a left-hand turn out of Ashwell onto Robius is a bit of a challenge, and accidents right. are happening there. Also at Cranbeck, there have been things off of Huguenot where it's been a challenge. Um, folks, slow down on Panetta. I mean, uh, that is a road that's very easily folks can um, uh, pick up speed on, right, right. especially coming down Robius and the, you know, coming down that hill. And then any name of a road that starts with the word old, <laughs> means that it is a windy, narrow road. So we're talking old Otterdale, old Bonaire. Um, we're talking about old Buckingham, yeah. and of course, old Gunn. Yeah. I mean, we lost a couple of students right. there, and uh, the community is still grieving. I'm still grieving. Yeah. And so um, we need to, to just uh, uh, remind everybody yeah. um, that we're not invincible. Right. <laughs> you know, yeah. um, we're in these metal boxes, and they're moving very, very quickly, yeah. and we just need to be careful. Yeah. Now, speaking of careful, and we'll, we'll get you out of here on this one. Um, obviously a big part of, um, you know, the, the whole, what I would call like the county operation, the county organization is public safety. Um, that obviously is a, is, is central to a lot of people's minds these days, um, in terms of sort of not just the support, but also sort of the communication and the, in the community aspect of it. And I'm just curious to get sort of your, um, sort of some of your thoughts on, um, crime in, in the county crime in your district, um, the way that you've, um, sort of worked with um, police and, and, and sort of what you're hearing from residents uh, about that. Right. Yeah. I mean, there has been some concerns about some recent break-ins down on the Robius Corridor. Right. I've been working closely with the folks uh, in the area in Riverton and Tarrington and uh, Salisbury and Powderham. And I mean, just that, those areas in Rivers Bend uh, to 
good communication. I recently did a podcast and uh, with with the president of Shoah Salisbury Homeowners Association and with four police officers. Right. Um, please reach out to me, Miller Mark at Chesterfield.gov, and I will send that podcast your direction. Um, but uh, this is something that we're paying attention to. It has been. It's not a crime wave. Crime wave. What it more is is there's been a couple of isolated break-ins. Right. And uh, I mean, just hats off to our. Um, police for be paying attention to this and being able to keep us all safe along with of course fire yeah. and ems and yeah good deal well dr miller i very much appreciate you coming on the show very glad to be able to have you and um, we'll talk to you again down the road hey i appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation brad um this is the way communication happens awesome thank, thank you very you. much all right, now make sure you check us out on social media. On Twitter, it's at Chesterfield VA, and on Instagram, it's Chesterfield Virginia, all one word. And on Facebook, you can check out our podcast page. Just search Chesterfield behind the mic. Now, make sure you follow or subscribe to the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Overcast, or a whole host of other places where you can get the show. And if you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we'd appreciate it. As always, a video version of the show is available on our website as well as on our YouTube channel. You can also check chestfield.gov slash podcast. That's where you can submit feedback anytime, make suggestions, or just reach out to us. You can also watch the show on WCCT Thursday through Sunday at 7 on the weekends at noon. That's Comcast Channel 98 and Verizon Channel 28. Lastly, you can check out chestfield.gov slash connect with us to find out a number of ways to connect with us here in Chesterfield County. My thanks to my director, Martin Stiff, my executive producer, Teresa Boniface, and all the good folks from constituent and media services for all they do. My thanks to you for joining us today. So from all of us here in Chesterfield, thanks again for making us a part of your day. We'll see you again real soon. Take good care.